started. Um, thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, I know we have a number of uh, first timers in the call uh, where this is their first experience with the Auto Care Advocacy Leadership Team. Um, so let me just give you all kind of a quick summary on, on why we started this program and uh, why we're all here today. So when it comes to kind of grassroots advocacy, which is my field of my area of study, um, these days, um, you know, with communicating with and, and changing the minds of elected officials, um, what really moved the needle are what we call key relationships between legislators and their constituents. So it used to be, you know, companies, associations, or nonprofits um, would have an issue that they wanted Congress or you know state legislature to address. Um, they would have their employees, members, advocates, whatever. Um, send in thousands, sometimes millions of identical form letters saying, you know, please support this bill or this measure, whatever. That method um, these days is honestly no longer effective. Um, congressional offices have found ways to kind of weed out what they consider to be, you know, these spam form letters. Um, what is effective, however, now is, is, is a personal email or a personal phone call to the elected official from a constituent they're familiar with or, you know, at least hopefully have met with before. Um, that addresses a particular concern. So, you know, with it now easier than ever to to communicate uh, with legislators, they are much more inclined to actually listen to what they perceive to be, you know, a genuine, well thought out comment from an actual voter. Um, and in our case, you know, a potential voter who's also a business person, which which helps as well. Um, think of it in terms of you know, like email marketing. Um, you know, emails from vendors or marketers that come from an individual person and sound more personal. Um, as opposed to, you know, a, a, to whom it may concern kind of generic message um, are much more likely to be open and responded to. Same goes, same goes for this method of communication. And that is kind of why we started the Auto Care um, Advocacy Leadership Team earlier this year, um, because it's, you know, it's now more about quality than quantity. You know, educate a, a select few about our issues and connect them to their elected officials, and from there we can actually, you know, we, we truly make sure Congress and the states are kind of hearing our industry's message. Um, as I mentioned in my email, uh, we, we hold educational webinars about once a month, um, or once every two months on topics ranging from our major issues like vehicle telematics to, you know, how to invite your member of Congress to your place of business. Um, and I'll say that, you know, our, our competitors, you know, in, you know, particularly the new car dealers um, are already doing this very, very well. Um, and, and, and with you know, numerous important issues like, like telematics, data security, warranty rights, um, starting to gain steam in, in, in Congress and the states. Uh, it's, it's more important than ever, I think, that we have an on-the-ground network of auto care advocates who can leverage their relationships and, uh, and champion our issues. Um, last thing I'll say about this is, you know, we have a kind of a huge range of individuals currently in the program um, in terms of expertise in this area and connections. So um, some people joined, you know, who are already familiar with the purpose of advocacy and, you know, having already formed a relationship with their legislators. Um, but most came in having no knowledge of advocacy and not knowing any of the elected officials, which is fine. And then for those people, you know, my goal in this is to give you all the resources you need to get you to the next level and, and really become a, a true advocacy representative for your company in the industry. Um, moving on to, to why we're actually having this call today, um, our, our, our topic is advocacy and your peers. Um, so sharing what you know about our issues and advocacy in general with your various personal and professional um, circles. Uh, we're joined again today by Adam Mellis, Director of Grassroots Consulting for Aristotle International. Um, Adam's spoken uh, on a few calls, a few of our calls in the past about general advocacy tactics and strategy, and he will take you through his presentation in a second. Uh, but before I turn it over to him, I just want to talk about one more thing real quick. Um, I assume most everyone on this call is going to be, will be attending APEX um, in Vegas this November, or at least somebody from your company will be. Um, our department, the Auto Care Association Government Affairs Department, is hosting a panel discussion on government affairs issues and grassroots advocacy on the Monday afternoon, just prior to the show floor opening. So 4 p.m., 4 to 5, Monday, November 2nd. Um, if you'll be in town that Monday, I strongly encourage you to attend. Um, the panelists will be a couple, couple people from the industry, and I'm actually in the process of trying to lock down um, a congressional staffer or a, a local political pundit to add to the, add to the discussion as well. Um, like I said, it'll only be an hour and we'll provide plenty of time for, for Q&A. So again, for active you know, auto care advocacy leaders or if you have a general interest in government affairs issues, um, please consider attending if you can make it. It's obviously free to attend. It'll be in the Venetian, uh, one of the ballrooms there. So be on the lookout for a formal invite over email um, in the coming weeks. And with that, um, let me now turn it over to Adam uh, for his presentation. If you have any questions, as always, you know, please write them in the box on the right of your screen labeled questions, um, and we will get to them at the end. So whenever you're ready, Adam, feel free to get started. Thanks, David. Um, hope folks can hear me all right. 
Uh, looks like it does. Okay, good. So, uh, David, you know, you mentioned sort of the, the mass communications, and, and one of the things I often like to share about those that uh, very quickly they became known as AstroTurf, which, as many of us should know, is fake grass. And so um, it's, it is a delicate line uh, between sort of the, the, the AstroTurf, which can look real from a distance, um, unless it's blue, uh, for those of you who are from Boise, Idaho. Um, but uh, it can also, but it also um, is treated differently. And so it's, it's, I think it's a great point that you bring up about the quality versus the quantity. I'm going to touch on a few things that uh, I've brought up in, in previous um, uh, webinars, and, and uh, David has those available for those who, who want a deeper dive into some of that. Um, but really want to spend some time talking about uh, sort of what your networks are and and why you need to expand your networks as you sort of look at this question of, of being a leader in the uh, auto care industry uh, in particular and talking with elected officials and, and helping discuss policy um, amongst others. and and. One of the slides that, that I've used before is sort of this uh, question on what is effective. And you know, it's an for, important thing here is that if you remember, this is a, from the Congressional Management Foundation, and they asked Hill staff members, so people who work for your member of Congress or work in Senate offices, um, if your member hasn't already arrived to a firm decision on issue, how much influence does these various tactics that an organization may use um, will uh, you know will be able to influence um, your the member and you know right off the bat constituent visits you know if someone is is a constituent and they're meeting with that member of Congress uh, they know that's a real person they know it's a real person who lives in their district um, it's a real person who lives in their district who may or may not vote for them but certainly is somebody that they want to have a positive relationship with, um, you know, and, and, and really get to understand what their concerns and needs are, um, not necessarily, you know, for, for handout purposes, but more sort of just, you know, how are they going to be successful? What, what are the government programs that are hurting them? What are the ones that, you know, may or may not help them? Uh, what, what are the things that their community uh, is looking for? Um, and and certainly, where can when uh, can that elected official be be helpful? Um, and and looking at sort of the the visit from a constituent, the visit, contact from another from a con representative of another constituent. So, let's say you know you you need to get in touch with uh, the member of Congress from the state three states over. Well, if your member of Congress reaches out to them. They'll listen to that member of Congress as well. And that, of course, also requires constituent contact. So there's some influence there. Um, I always like to point out the fact that if you look at the first four of these, they are involved constituent personalization and, and, and personal contact of some kind. Uh, five is the visit from the lobbyist. And um, I, I will say, as, as, a, as a former registered lobbyist, uh, often what I would hear <laughs> Uh, from members of Congress is, well, what do the people in my district think? So even then, it goes back to this notion of, of who the, what are the people saying? And sort of how can we have some effectiveness there? Um, moving on, sort of thinking about ways to interact with your member of Congress, you know, how important are, you know, understanding constituent opinions. These are different places where constituent can express their opinion that they're they're understanding and you know certainly events uh, which is a face-to-face -face interaction um, attending a town hall which is another face-to-face -face and public interaction uh, attending a, you know various other personal contacts um, you know what I would say is it really again sort of reinforces the notion that your personal connections mean a difference um, what I would say sort of in the topic for today is how do you strengthen that personal connection and, and that personal outreach effort? Um, 
obviously, uh, these are things that, that David and I know very well because we, we work it all the time, but a lot of folks don't really understand this, that um, Congress is spending more time away from Washington. Um, and that doesn't mean that they're working in Washington for 70 days a week and going on vacation for the other uh, 290 or so. Uh, it, it means that they're working in Washington uh, and using their time there in Washington to go back to the district more often to be with constituents and understand what the perspective outside of Washington is. Um, and because they are here as a representative uh, body. Um, historically, there would be a lot of cases where members of Congress would only go back in the month of August, and uh, that has shifted, and, and now for over the last 20 years and almost, the congressional calendar has added recesses or district work periods, extended the weekend, if you will, um, which I mean, worked for members of Congress in the past. Uh, that weekend was always filled with constituent visits. So it really sort of mattered that you know they were using their time to connect with their constituents. The other thing that's happened is the cost of elections have increased. And so any positive contact with a constituent is a potential vote. <laughs> and and it, it's, it's, it, it says a lot when constituents are connecting Members of Congress want to hear from constituents because they want to feel that they're doing strong constituent service. I met with a candidate for Congress uh, two years ago, and his comment to me was, I know I will be successful if I you know, am providing the best constituent service as possible. He wasn't talking about industries or anything. He was talking about how he could connect with constituents. Um, so you know, the question I've asked in previous ones are, are you telling your story? And are you the only one telling your story? Um, because ultimately, there are other factors in this industry. You know, David mentioned the, the new automobile sales uh, lobby. Um, you know, certainly they have a story to tell. And you know, if you're a member of Congress, you may think that it's the same story for new versus used versus parts versus go down the list. Um, ultimately, the other thing is but do others have the same story to tell? And, and this is where, coming in, where it comes to expand your network. Ultimately, there are people who are in your industry, who are in you know, the same position you are, who probably have the same story to tell. And so how do you optimize those connections? Because many of them probably don't know they should be telling their story. Um, so here's a, you know, proverbial tree falling in the woods doesn't make any noise. And you know, I'd say uh, it's pretty hard to find a picture of the tree in the woods um, because there's usually people there now. But uh, what, you know, what I'd say is it's not so much whether or not the tree makes noise. It's whether or not the lone tree is louder than multiple trees. And so what I would say is looking at your network, is how more about how do you expand that singular voice to be multiple voices? How do you make it so it's more constituents or a greater set of the industry speaking on the issue? Um, so sort of the, the, the final notion I'd, I'd make on the, the big picture, um, if you will, is looking at sort of a, a perspective and it's sort of a, a pyramid here where at the bottom is you know if I'm the member of Congress or if I'm the person being influenced, I'm listening to somebody tell me something that I have no information on. So my initial response is that is an individual point of view. Now, if that person, if I'm a member of Congress or an elected official of sorts, and I find out that that person lives in my district or part of my constituency, and there's more than one, well, that's a vocal constituency who are who come together to speak their point of view. Moving forward, it's commonly shared beliefs. If it's something where it's you know, not just one industry, but multiple industries. If you're hearing it from multiple industries of you know, multiple sides of a particular issue, it could be you know, majority point of view. Um, universal agreement is like, you know, I'd say it's gold. If there's something where 100% you know, of the people agree on and, and we're not doing it or we're, uh, they're agreed that it's bad, then you know, something should probably happen with that. And uh, typically that's when, you know, elected officials go, well, 
we now identified something bad and we're going to now try to actually fix it. Um, so understanding that you may believe that you have a universal agreement on a particular issue is one thing, but in reality, if you're speaking to someone who knows nothing about that issue, they may think it's just your individual point of view. And so where you actually fit on that scale ultimately becomes an expression of, is your network also engaging with those, uh, on those issues? And, and so it's up to you as a leader in, in this network, if you will, uh, to expand the voice and outreach of the network. So I'm going to talk a little bit about networks, if you will. And so the first network I want to talk about is what I would call your internal network. And, and those are the people that you work with every day. It's the people who may uh, be in the same business in the same city, uh, but you know, you're in competition with each other. Um, it may be you know, someone who's part of your supply chain uh, and friends and family. What I would say is your internal network are people who are personally want to be you see you successful uh, or share the exact same experiences in a sort of a macro sense. And, you know, so obviously your competition probably doesn't want to see you successful or maybe they're altruistic and they do, but uh, they do want, they do have a similar experience often as you do when it comes to a regulatory issue or a potential impact of legislation. Um, so thinking about sort of that internal network and, and who they are. Um, often what I like to recommend is, you know, just looking at your Christmas card list or looking at, you know, sort of who you're writing the bills to and, and understanding that, you know, there are certain people that you've built relationships with over the course of owning or running or being part of your business. Um, that you can reach out to and discuss an issue with and really sort of focus on what are the issues that the association is working on. It may be that um, the person who you're in direct competition with because they're on the other side of an intersection, if you will, uh, may not understand what the, you know, the association is working on an issue and may not understand the impact, but they would need someone who they know to explain it to them so they can look into it, and ultimately you may convert that person to also be an advocate. Now, if I'm an elected official and I see two guys who are running competing businesses in my district coming to me with the same thing, we're getting more closer to, oh, wait a minute, this is actually something that could affect this entire industry, uh, where I may be a little bit more skeptical if one person is coming about one thing. Um, the other thing I'd sort of say on the, the internal network as you're reaching out to them is, you know, focus on the issues, um, not necessarily, you know, what it means to your business personally, uh, but what it means to the business as a whole. And, and what, what, what I mean by this is don't make it be something that is just about you when you're connecting with your network. It's about both of you. It's about us. Um, and sort of understand that uh, in, in connecting those, those dots, sometimes you may have to do it with talking about that person's business. Um, and, uh, but making sure that they understand that there is a stake in these issues for them as well. And, and don't assume that there's agreement or assume that even their politics are the same as you. Um, and so that's why I sort of recommend on staying on the course with the issue itself. Um, it, it, there was an interesting report uh, put out recently where they talked about um, putting what people's assumptions on issues based on the presentation of it. And often what happens is that individuals will agree with an issue um, if it's the issue affects them and but their opinion will change over the course of time if they see a political label attached to the issue. And so right off the bat, if you're assigning a political label to the issue, not knowing what that person's politics may be, um, and, and we, our company does a lot of 
uh, voter list analysis, and I can tell you it's very difficult to always be right when you pinpoint somebody's politics. But uh, making sure that you stay to the issue first will not sort of undercut the argument on why the issue is good by adding the politics right off the bat. Politics does get involved, but focusing on the issue itself is going to be much more important. Um, and, and I always had friends and family here because you know these are people who you know, uh, and they may have connections that you uh, with with some of the elected officials and in, in, in the area. They they both are they're sort of both an internal network and an external network. I, I usually put them with internal just because you know it's. It, it, it's a little bit easier in some cases to talk about your business with your brother, um, at least with me. My brother does all kinds of things that have nothing to do with. But you know, getting him to sort of understand that issue, he can also then talk about you know how that particular issue may impact them. And you sort of see this in, in um, some of the debate about uh, healthcare reform, and not to you know take a position on the issue itself, but just say as various individuals were talking about how the health care reform bill was going to impact them, uh, looking at that, suddenly various constituents said, oh, you know what, you're right, that affects me, and that affects me. And um, right now in Congress, they're talking about sort of the uh, health care Cadillac tax, if you will. And the coalition opposed to that includes the Chamber of Commerce and the AFL-CIO, um, which you know, you have those two groups in agreement on something, you may actually see something done because you have major constituency. Um, so sort of thinking about, you know, expanding that. And so moving on to the external network um, and sort of understanding where that external network is. Um, Ultimately, your external network is going to include regional organizations, uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, the Rotary Club, uh, other businesses and industries. Um, you know, it may be that uh, there are uh, businesses, uh, it, say your your store is an industrial complex or it's in a, a strip mall, and you may have gotten to know you know the other business owners in that sort of area. You know, that's can be ultimately be part of your external network. Um, it can include other elected officials, ones who may not have a, the ability to make a decision on something, but ones who may want to help express your point of view. And uh, we were recently working with a, a group uh, that was um, putting together regulatory statements for a public comment period. And as I was reviewing a lot of the public comments that were submitted uh, by the various uh, uh, organizations and companies. Uh, often, I would find you know, state representatives or city mayors um, writing letters as part of the public comment on behalf of some of these other organizations. And so, making sure that you know, as you're expanding this sort of network to talk about issues, you know, there are leaders within your own community uh, that will certainly often like to help. Um, and, and so it's sort of thinking about that. And then the media. Um, you know, the, the media is, is somebody who, you know, they want to talk about sort of local issues and, and what they could mean. And as a business leader uh, in your local community, um, the media is somebody who potentially can be part of the network and help expand uh, your reach on an issue or um, a perspective of, of other things. So um, similar to reaching out with the internal network, you know, sticking to the issue, not assuming agreement, uh, but also you know, understanding that those parts of your external network may also have issues that they want to share with you. Um, when I, uh, I used to be with the American Institute of Architects, and one of our best grassroots advocates was also a member of uh, his local chamber of commerce and served as a committee chair for the local chamber. And so every now and then he'd be up in Washington on a chamber function. And he'd come in and, and he'd, he'd share with me sort of a list of things. And he'd say, you know, what, what are these can I say AI is also with me? You know, go through the list, you know, no opinion, opinion, no opinion, opinion. And he would look at that and he would, every chance he had to say, 
You know, I'm also a member of the American Institute of Architects Grassroots Network, and this is an issue that AIA also cares about. Certainly help increase the influence uh, and the attention uh, of the audience on, on sharing those points of view. And so, um, just sort of, you know, there, there's it's a two-way streak often with, uh, you know, the external networks. Okay. Um, finally, I started talking about the legislative network, and this is a, a slide from previous presentation about setting up meetings, but uh, it, it's an important one to sort of understand is the structure of your member of Congress's office, uh, where they have a district office as well as a DC office head and, and various individuals working in that area. When you're meeting with a member of Congress or a member of their staff, um, and, and, and often members of Congress bring staff with them to functions. Um, those members of staff are probably the individuals who are actually working on the issue that you're going to talk to them about. Um, and so they are going to want to be as knowledgeable on the particular set of issues as possible. Um, and so thinking about um, ways to sort of build that into your network. Um, a legislative staff person in a Hill office may have eight different buckets of issues from uh, taxes to uh, the environment to energy to you can go down the list. And from there, there may be a whole number of nuances that they are very, very strong on, but there may be a part of their issue portfolio that you know, they just don't have a lot of information. And if you're talking with a legislative staff person and they're asking questions to get more information about that issue, that is your opportunity to really educate that staff person on the issue and add them to your network. It's an opportunity to not only sort of talk about, you know, the issue, but also how it impacts the business, how it impacts the industry. and it gives you the opportunity to continually go back and forth with them on issues, not just the one that you went there on that day, but also other issues as they come down the road. Um, you know, so it's it's something to sort of think about. Is you know, yes, you know, ultimately, you know, you want to be with the member of Congress and their staff and them to understand what your role is, but you also need to sort of start thinking of them as part of your network, as part of the group of people that you're going to reach out to when there's action that needs to be made, um, or group of people that uh, you want to invite to particular events so that they know that there's more to what your business is other than what you saw them about one year ago, six months ago, five years ago. So sort of thinking about that in your network. Um, Moving on, and, and David, I don't know if there's any questions or not that have been asked, but the question panel is actually not showing on my screen. But uh, what I will say is sort of moving on, think about sort of the next steps. Uh, between now and the end of the year, I would like you to sort of think up of two members of your internal network and let them know what the uh, association is doing uh, and, and why those policies have a strong impact on not just your business, but their business to succeed. And identify members of, of a, your external network and reasons why they might want to care about the Auto Care Association's agenda. Um, and, and maybe even listen to what their association's agenda might be. Um, even if they're, you know, they may be a part of a grassroots network with another association, you probably have no idea. Um, and then invite the members of your network to your next meeting with an elected official. You know, that there's been a lot of success amongst uh, previous uh, webinar attendees and meeting with their member of Congress as well as uh, connecting with staff and um, you know certainly as those move uh, on you know think about you know who else can come with you to this appointment or think about ways that they can um, interact with other people in your industry or part of your network uh, to help expand not just sort of your ability to communicate on an issue, but your reach on a particular issue as well. Um, uh, David, if you have uh, additional next steps. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Um, good, good stuff. 
Uh, before I actually, I do have one action item I want to talk to the group about. But before I get into that, I got one of the, I got a question um, from one of the uh, new participants um, asking about rules to be mindful of when meeting with the members of Congress. One thing I realized today is I know we have a lot of new participants and you know who made this may seem a little bit advanced to them in terms of you know us skipping things like you know how to how to reach out to your congressman and yeah. the steps to do that and and what's the protocol for going about that. So we have a lot of recordings of these past webinars from earlier in the year that I can obviously send out to the new participants as well as talking points, various other resources. So we will definitely get you up to speed on that information. Um, do you yeah. have anything to add to that? I mean, just a few quick tips or tricks yeah, to I... people about reaching out to the member of Congress, whether it's in D.C. or back home in the district. Yeah. I would say the, 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 the 30 second version of that is um, be respectful, uh, be willing to listen as well as share your point of view. And, and ultimately it's, you know, it's an act of scheduling with the district office to set up that appointment. And you know, the individuals who work in that district office, they're not political. They're government employees who work for that member of Congress. And so um, you know, keeping politics out of the discussion and really focusing on the issue and what it means uh, to you as a constituent, that's important. I mean, there's parallel lines when it deals with politics, and, but, you know, ultimately, you know, this is not a political discussion as much as it is an, an, an issue discussion. Yep. No, I think those are, those are definitely good. Um, and you know, a lot of this information, you know, for people who've, who've, who've you know, been on these calls before too, may seem somewhat obvious in terms of you know talking to people about our issues and the networks. But I think it kind of organizes it well, and it also kind of fits into this whole larger notion that we at the association are trying to kind of spread throughout our members and in the industry at large, which is that you know to think of our industry as 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 an industry. You know what I mean? The the, the OEMs and the dealers have the benefit of having kind of more of an inherent you know kind of uh, unity amongst them and their their other you know dealers or other OEMs and stuff, and I think it's it's valuable for us for our manufacturers, our distributors, retailers, whoever to kind of get together and think of themselves not just as a retailer or just as as AutoZone or O'Reilly or whoever, but as part of the larger auto care network and talking about the issues that impact all of us because you know I think a lot of the discussions that happen between our members at our meetings and other things tend to be strictly you know strictly B two B kind of business talk, but I think it's important that we talk about issues at large that affect all of us. Um, so I'm, I appreciate everyone um, you know, staying involved and kind of carrying that message today. As I mentioned, I do have another action item beyond what Adam talked about in terms of you know, reaching out to your network and, and, and informing them about our issues. We, um, we have a, uh, we just launched an auto care caucus in Congress. Um, we have four founding co-chairs, so four congressmen, two Democrats, two Republicans, um, and we will be actively recruiting um, other members of Congress to join in the coming months. For those of you who don't know uh, what a caucus is, it's basically a group of congressmen or, or congresswomen um, who share a particular interest and, and, and want to pursue kind of you know specific legislative agenda. So kind of like an after school after school club back in like high school, right? There's there's an Alzheimer awareness caucus. There's a ski and snowboard caucus. Um, the OEMs already have a caucus called the Congressional Automotive Caucus, um, which has been around a little while, and I think they have at least a few dozen members. Um, so this is, you know, simply kind of another way for us in D.C. to kind of step up our influence um, on Capitol Hill and, and, and further go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with our competitors. Um, after my call, um, in, in, you know, my follow-up, I usually send a follow-up email after these calls with the recording, the PowerPoint, and then various other, you know, updates I'm going to make. Um, I will include the white paper on the caucus uh, for you to either share or give in person to your member of Congress. Um, in terms of when, I'll ask for you, you know, to do that. Um, I'll provide more information about that, I think, later on. Um, but in the meantime, if you do happen to be in communication with your congressman or have a meeting coming up, um, this is a good ask to kind of bring to them. Um, and I think it goes a lot farther if it's coming from you all, you know, the constituent as opposed to um, us, the uh, annoying lobbyists from D.C. So uh, with that, Adam, you have anything else to add? If not, yeah, we can... I would just uh, say that it's great to know that the uh, Auto Care Association has, has this caucus available to to the membership to help recruit for because uh, these caucuses really help uh, educate um, uh, real real impacts um, that uh, industry may have, um, as well as the value that the industry may provide. And when I was with the American Institute of Architects, we were very much involved with a congressional uh, high performance building caucus, which really talked about how. Uh, buildings could be designed to, to save energy. And uh, it was a very strong educational tool uh, that 
we took advantage of as well as other partnering organizations. So it's it's a good good effort to have. So. Yep, no, I appreciate that uh, that example. Um, so like I said, I'll send more information about that um, in the next few days, as well as uh, more information about the Apex event as we finalize the details for that. Um, and with that, I will uh, wrap things up. And uh, hopefully, uh, people who join today for the first time will will come back the next time. And uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you again. So thank you.